Hey, which compass is most accurate and does it really even stinking matter? Coming up. Welcome to the channel, friends. As always, man, I am super stoked and super pumped up to see you, man. So Jimmy dropped a question about how accurate do compasses need to be, specifically the relationship between uh, base plates and lensatic compasses, specifically the Kamanga compass. And by the way, if you're looking for any type of gear, uh, whether it's land nav related or not, look down in the description below. You find a, a link over to my Amazon influencer page where you can find all kinds of, of food, fire, water, shelter, first aid, navigation tools. If you think of it, it's probably there. And even more specific than that, you know, and, and I'll, we'll, we'll show you here in a second, but a the, the base plate on a lens added compass is about an inch and a half uh, in diameter here, right? So, whereas a uh, a lot of base plate compasses, this is a, a Silva. You see that the base plate uh, or the the, the 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 dial here is, uh, I think, two and a quarter inches. Uh, I just measured it, and that should be about right, about two and a quarter. So, what does that difference mean? And ultimately, you know, as we look down on a compass, we can see that as we're reading uh, our degrees that we have variations, we have tick marks every five degrees, every five degrees. Whereas on a uh, base plate compass, I can see a tick mark for 52, every two degrees on this particular one. You know, does that make a difference? And it's a great question. And I have a, a similar video that's gonna be coming out probably within the next month or so. And it's going to be on a on a uh, related topic I was working on, Jimmy, and I hope everybody else that you can enjoy it as well. Uh, but it's going to be about how to determine if your needle is actually pointing north or is your compass cheating on you? That's ultimately the question, right? <laughs> Ain't nobody want no stinking cheating compass. So, Jimmy, it's a great question. You know, uh, is it... Does it matter? And ultimately, I guess it, it depends on, on what you're trying to do. And so, you know, as we get going, you know, does it really matter, Jimmy? I think, I think ultimately it doesn't. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna try to find a good spot here to show you why. Oh, this is probably a real good one right here. Um, so, you know, the first reason why I think is because, you know, yes, if you moved out, let's just say, you know, with a Kamanga compass, you were a solid five degrees off. If you were five degrees off and you were able to stay on a straight line on that azimuth and you, you should have plotted, you know, 270 degrees, but you moved out at 275 degrees and somehow you managed to stay on a straight line, no deviation at all for a thousand meters. If you're off five degrees at a thousand meters, it's going to uh, put you off at, uh, um, about 85 or 90 meters. I, I think that's about right. 85 or 90. Now, depending on what you're looking for, that, that's huge, man. Uh, that's huge. But hey, if you're trying to move out a thousand meters on one azimuth, especially through some terrain like this, you're smoking crack, man. You're smoking some serious daggum crack. And I don't want none of that. Uh, but depending on what you're looking for, it doesn't matter. Because if you're looking for a large building, if you're looking for a train feature, if you're looking for a road intersection, maybe it was a natural train feature or man-made, either one, right? Then that five degrees isn't going to be that big of a deal. It's not going to be that big of a deal at all. Now, that being said, if you're trying to move out, um, you know, 100 meters, you're only going to be off, you know, probably 10, 10 meters. You know, it's not going to be that far off at all. So again, it doesn't really matter. But that being said, it, it stinking matters, Jimmy. It, it really does. And everybody else, I, I need you to hear me. It matters because you need to take all of these variables outside of the equation. You need to be running and gunning perfectly with no variation. If you start uh, assuming taking things for granted that it's not going to matter, you're going to set yourself up for failure. And it's not going to go the way that you were hoping it was. So to put it in perspective, uh, I'll get you a, a picture here in a second. I'm going to guesstimate um, 
that the bridge out there is uh it's got to be close to 500 meters and from here the tree line on the left is exactly 215 degrees on the right about 200 and 17 degrees so there's only a couple degrees difference just looking at here and just kind of help put it into perspective right that you know a couple degrees and i can i can i can say that with some fair accuracy yes i only have increments of five degrees but I think I can reasonably, especially if I'm using a compass to cheek method to try to get determine an exact azimuth, I can determine more than just five degrees. I, I can probably get it to within uh, uh, two degrees for sure uh, of being spot on. And as we look out, should you have made a mistake of just a couple degrees? Yeah, it's going to put you off a little bit. So if I'm looking for a, a, an ammo can or something, it might take me a little bit longer to find it. But if it was more open like this, you know, if the water was, was just grass and it was a prairie and I made a mistake like that, I, I'm going to be able to find what I'm looking for, no problems. Now, with a base plate such as this, you know, if I don't have a mirror, if it's not a mirrored uh, uh, base plate compass, so that I can shoot a precise azimuth similar to going compass to cheek. And here I, I'm stuck having to use a center hold method. I may have more tick marks but it actually doesn't do me any good because i'm not going to be able to get as accurate right hope that makes sense well brother man i hope that answered your question and if anybody else is out there who had the same or similar question or didn't even know that to have that question i, I hope it uh, i hope it helped you out and if talking about this spurred up some more questions leave some comments down below a about the content of the video what we talked about b if you have a question make sure you leave it and I'll, I'll hit you back up as well we can keep this conversation rolling keep learning from each other man i i uh, hope you do i hope you all are doing well and if you haven't already done so make sure you like this one uh, and if you want to stay up to date on some future content, make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notification bell. That way uh, you'll, you'll get notified on uh, future content when, with and whenever and however YouTube decides to do this, which is kind of a mystery to all of us. Right? It's kind of a mystery to all of us, myself included. Like I'm subscribed to some channels and I, I barely get notifications. <laughs> so I understand the struggles. Man, the struggle is real. But I appreciate you hanging out with me for here for a few minutes. And man, and I look forward to seeing you all next time. And until then, y'all stay stoked. <clears throat> Which at... <clears throat> Which compass is most accurate and does it really even stinking matter? Coming up. Hey, welcome to the channel, friends. As always, man, I am super stoked to see you. So Stoker here, and today we're going to talk about a question that Jimmy uh, dropped down uh, to me. As far as, you know, how accurate does a compass need to be? And specifically in this one, we're talking about uh, the difference between a Kamanga and a base plate. You know, a, a Kamanga compass, a lensatic compass, the base plate is um, about an inch and a half wide, right, uh, to, to where the uh the, the, your your thingies are <laughs> holy shit man learn how to talk